And once you have these set of features, as I said earlier, like the first part is you can just uh, do classification in bonding box regression. This is faster RCN. You don't have to change that part. And this is the additional branch where you can have like multiple uh, convolution blocks or convolution layers. You can have like whatever kind of architecture you want to predict the boundary for you. In this case, you can see it's giving you 28 cross 28 cross 80. And 80 is like the number of classes. And I think this uh, figure I'm showing, this is for uh, MS Coco uh, data set, which is used for instance segmentation. And there are 80 different semantic categories there. So what we do is we have one channel for one category. Okay, so 80 categories, 80 different channels, and the spatial resolution is 28 cross 28. All right. So because this is not like you, you can have multiple instances in that bigger image, right? And each instance might be of varying shape, but whatever that is, we just target that to 28 cross 28. And there are some issues there, and I will, I will talk about that, what those are, but that is what we predict. So the way it works is because in the ground truth, you know whether this particular proposal is a cat, it's a dog, right? From the ground truth. Now, what will happen is if your proposal is coming from cat, even though you are predicting 80 different channels, for 79 of those channels, you will just predict like background because nothing is present from those categories, right? And just for the channel for cat, you're going to say that, okay, in this pixel, cat is present. In this pixel, cat is not present. So it will be just a binary, uh, a binary problem, whether it's a foreground or background. And since you have like 80 different channels, one channel for each category, you can do this for like multiple, multiple semantic labels. Okay, so that's how the instance uh, segmentation thing works. Now, as I said, the prediction, you can see like this is 28 cross 28 cross 80. And not all objects are like this squared shape. They will have different aspect ratio. So even in this case, depending upon the aspect ratio of, of your object, this bonding boxes will, will differ a lot. So in this case, it's kind of rectangle, rectangular, right? If you have like a person here, which will be a little tall, then your proposal will be like, like that. It will be a vertical rectangle. But eventually we are using ROI align, ROI align to map it to like a fixed size feature map, something like this. So whatever shape we have, it's actually being converted to square. So that's how it's been trained. But eventually you know that what was the shape of your proposal, right? And you also know the shape from this bonding box. And you can just use that aspect ratio or you can actually convert the square shape prediction depending upon that, that aspect ratio to fix like the, the correct, uh, to actually get the correct aspect ratio of your original object. So this is like what your network will show because it's 28 cross 28 and it's going to be square. And it's saying soft prediction, soft prediction because for each pixel, we are saying whether this is a foreground or background. So it's going to be a number. And very rarely, actually not rarely, your network will never say one or zero the way it does for classification, right? It never predicts one or zero. Even though we are training the network to predict zero and one, but it will never do that. It will be some fraction between zero and one. And that's exactly what will happen in this case as well. So you will have values like which are close to zero, they will be background. You'll have values like which are closer to one, higher value, they will be foreground. And that's why it's called soft prediction because it's not like, uh, it's not discrete zero and one. But we can make, make it that. We can use some threshold, let's say 0.5. If we are, let's say, predicting between zero and one. We can say that if the value of the pixel is less than 0.5, that goes in the background. If the value is bigger than 0.5, that goes in the foreground. So that's the first step. We uh, change that. Uh, okay, no. So again, it, it doesn't matter like whether you do that first or you resize it first. So in this case, I'm showing like the first uh, thing uh, which is being done is you just resize your prediction because you know your uh, bonding box, right? From the, the top, top branch, which is doing uh, object detection. So what you will do is you will just convert this uh, square prediction to this aspect ratio and just resize it. And then you will convert your values to either zero or one. Okay, so you, you will convert your soft prediction to hard predictions. And that's going to give you like the final boundary. Even though the network is predicting like this, but you can see like it's, it's very much close to the ground truth. 
and that you can just use as your instance segmentation output for each instance and of course you can have multiple objects you will have this individual here you will have these uh, people sitting over here right for each of those you will have the bonding boxes and you will do the same steps and these are like some of the results and you can see like these are pretty cool results uh, from mask rcnn and different different scenarios like very different environments this is very crowded even in this case you can separate like these individuals pretty well okay, you have the nice boundaries of course you have bonding boxes um, which says where the person is but you have like these fine, fine boundaries as well which we discussed like are important for some of the uh, applications okay, in this case you can see like all these car i think they are parked or moving i don't know they might be parked as well right here you can still like separate all those instances so pretty cool results even the car which is far away right? some other samples again you can see like it doesn't matter what's the scale of your object the the glasses they are pretty small right and the people are pretty big and this is being taken care by the the proposals you have because the network has the capability to predict proposals right so it knows like what's the size of this object because it's actually looking at the image and then estimating okay this could be the size and also the aspect ratio you will have different aspect ratios for bench like it might be a horizontal rectangle for people it might be vertical and again for people like it will vary a lot whether they are sitting whether they are standing so it can address like all these issues, aspect ratios, issue of scale, whether the object is close to the camera or far away from the camera. Okay, and that ROI align we discussed, that's actually enabling to find these, these difficult boundaries here, how to separate these instances. 